Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Lee, as Ron said. Uh, I've been with VMware about three years. You know, in my uh, role as a cloud solutions architect, I'm typically in the front lines engaging with prospects and customers, uh, you know, running POCs, giving demos. Um, so I wanted to give you my unique perspective when it comes to cloud security. So today I'm gonna go over five different ways that uh, you can help uh, help improve your cloud security posture. So now let's go over some of the backgrounds and some of the challenges. So here are some statistics about the biggest security threats in the cloud. Certainly, uh, I don't want to inundate you with all these numbers, but let's just get to the um, highlight to the largest one. Um, it's well established that misconfigurations really are the biggest challenge for cloud security teams out there. Uh, most of the time, it's due to really just simple mistakes. Um, really, like for example, one of the the ones that are really responsible for some of the largest data breaches out there are just a simple S3 encryption. Um, it's actually an option that's enabled by default. So when you do see those headlines uh, where millions of accounts were exposed, someone actually decided to turn it off. And so cloud security is often a challenge of ownership knowledge and scale so which team is responsible for cloud security um, this issue typically boils down to them adapting a reactive rather than proactive uh, posture so ownership often is not clear so how do teams bridge the knowledge gap and get up to speed understanding a single cloud is you know in all their security services is already a massive challenge uh, let alone when you're multi-cloud so how do you effectively distribute responsibilities and scale them across your organization? Um, it's very difficult to find knowledgeable professionals um, that have experience you know, managing complex environments. Uh, we often see small teams that are outnumbered supporting hundreds of developers. You know, currently companies are now finding themselves in a position where they're transforming their workloads from on-premises you know, into the cloud, you know, where security may seem foundationally similar, uh, but it requires a different approach, a, a different solution. Um, how do we protect something that only runs for a few milliseconds, like a Lambda server? You know, companies need to start thinking about how they can make their workloads you know, more immutable. So for Cloud Health, this is where we decided to acquire a company called SecureState. Um, actually, it was called Cloud Corio back then, uh, back in 2019. Uh, to help customers with those challenges, you know, we wanted to offer them an advanced security framework to help not only start some of those difficult conversations, but also help them mature and advance in their security journey. You know, we begin this cloud um, begin this cloud maturity framework by encouraging companies to, um, you know, what's called shift left. You know, as we start moving security into some of those earlier foundational processes. Uh, the more ready companies find themselves to face these challenges. Uh, typically, it starts with you know visibility. You know, people want a way to aggregate security data from cloud providers and give them additional context. You know, they want to know what the developers are doing, what type of mistakes they're making. You know, what type of compliance frameworks um, that they should be adhering to, like you know CIS, NIST, PCI, or HIPAA. You know, teams need an easy way to see what they should be following. Um, then ideally, these companies will want to mature to the point that they incorporate automation into their workflows. Uh, this includes adding security processes into their CI CD pipeline um, and also auto remediation. Uh, and ultimately, shift left. You know, integrate these security checks directly into the pipeline so that everything you're creating is secure from the beginning. So when we first start talking to prospects, uh, the initial challenge we encounter is actually usually not technical. Uh, it actually simply starts with understanding who is responsible for the company's cloud security. Um, I usually ask a question like, who ultimately owns cloud security in your company? And surprisingly, many companies don't have a clear answer to this question. Uh, but unsurprisingly, it's because it's a very complicated topic. You know, it usually spans across multiple teams. Um, cloud security is sometimes treated like a live grenade being tossed from team to team until it goes off. 
Um, so the chart on the left here really illustrates this complexity. You know, it can be IT developers or IT departments, developers, InfoSec, DevOps. Uh, of course, it's not an easy question to answer as it represents you know, many aspects that concern different teams. So there's often a lot of confusion. Um, so on the chart on the right, you know, companies can begin to solve this issue by building a cloud center of excellence. So, you know, really the implications of a CCOE goes well beyond cloud security, um, but it definitely helps out since it typically concerns, you know, so many different teams, uh, it cannot be solved by just any one department. So the CCOE bridges this gap by establishing a group made up of representatives from you know, different teams like finance, engineering, security. Um, this is how that critical coordination can start to happen and uh, a greater plan can be put into action. Uh, you can start by addressing these problems like clarity between teams and you know, what really are the roles that they're gonna play. This is where a purpose-built solution like Secure Stake can come into play and help assist security teams. Um, it is a SaaS solution that helps support AWS, Azure, and GCP. It detects misconfigurations, uh, adherence to compliance frameworks, and it helps add security into your CI CD pipeline. Uh, it builds like an inter interconnected cloud security model from your entire cloud inventory uh, and adds context, it correlates risks, and remediates problems while giving you near real-time insights into your cloud infrastructure uh, through what we call event stream monitoring. Uh, it does that into different cloud services like AWS Guard Duty. Um, and ultimately, Secure State is that single piece of glass for your cloud security, helping set up best practices um, while it gives your developers a central place for API access. So now let's talk a bit different of the differently of the, the different things that we can help address with some of those challenges that we just covered. Um, here's some approaches that we recommend. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. You can start by leveraging your cloud native events. Uh, really the first step of many companies is to start with an initial scan of their environment. Uh, but the problem of API polling is that it leaves you in a very reactive state. You know, you're really only as good as your last scan, while certainly hackers are constantly scanning for open ports or looking for uh, other vulnerabilities. Uh, and it could potentially cause hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage that you may not know until days, weeks, or months later. Um, actually, I'm starting a POC right now with a prospect, and they're pretty new to the cloud, but they were actually relying on annual scans previously, and really, they want to transfer that strategy onto their cloud security. So, you know, granted, this is regarding a general security audit, but it illustrates just how you have to really change your mindset when it comes to the cloud. So, Secure State can aggregate these event streams from different places like um, AWS Cloud Trail logs, Azure Activity logs, and also Google Cloud Logging API. So this gives you near real-time monitoring on these threats and new misconfigurations. And we're looking to update you on these changes in about like 20 seconds on average, so pretty near real-time. So now let's take a look about how important context is and explore a use case. So Security teams are often in a bubble outside, you know, looking in to developers as they start deploying resources into the cloud. Um, security might see thousands of different violations, and this is where context will help out greatly. So here are two different findings on the same SSH port violation. So in the field, I oftentimes have to guide prospects on how to best prioritize their time. Uh, typically, it boils down to spotting problems and, you know, really how best to address them. So in this case, you know, which one should they prioritize and which one should they fix? You know, this is where context is extremely important. So the finding on the left illustrates a higher priority than the right uh, because we're adding this custom, you know, risk score to it because that security group has an instance connected to it. You know, while finding number two represents a lower risk, because it's an empty security group, 
even though technically both are violations, uh, finding one certainly is a higher priority to fix immediately, while finding two could wait. You know, time certainly is is an aspect. Um, so having this context will drive down the number of immediate high priority cases, leading to more feasible strategy for uh, remediation. So now let's take a look at another context example. This is a, another SSH violation. Um, there are a number of instances that are attached to the same SSH key, you know, and which one of them also has an IM uh, admin role profile attached to it. Um, this by itself is not usually an issue, but certainly again, context matters. Um, so what if developers use the same SSH key for a number of new instances? Um, which may have other gateways attached. This would greatly increase the uh, potential of house of cards that you're you know, unintentionally building. Uh, someone could use like a brute force technique, for example, to get in through one of those internet gateways and eventually gain some sort of you know admin access to that account. Um, so having this type of contextual mapping for each violation can help you um, not only uncover potential hidden security uh, risks, but also help you and seeing or showing the issue to other team members like developers. So let's talk a bit about how we can help enable developers. So with all the teams that I come in contact with, uh, it's not uncommon that they may be siloed from each other, you know, particularly uh, the ones that would like to use a tool like Secure State. Uh, but they lean he heavily on developers, you know, to, to make the changes and to fix the problem. Um, we are built using an API first methodology. Uh, we want to enable developers by giving them easy API access. Uh, this is so that they can accomplish what they need to be done, you know, without needing actual access to the platform. So, you know, as it's really not uncommon to avoid learning the GUI for just another platform again. So, for example, they can run security checks on resources as they move from testing or development to production. Uh, or maybe compliance uh, and security teams want to check what policies they are running in the cloud. So next, let's talk a bit about remediation. So in talking to customers, we encountered an interesting situation. You know, how do we offer auto remediation without seeding control? So most developers don't want to give right access to security, um, which is not unreasonable. I mean, really, they... They also want to be able to incorporate this into their DevOps pipeline. Uh, the ideal state for most companies would be to ship left, you know, integrate everything into a DevOps pipeline, uh, but realistically, they're not there today. So the solution we came up with fully isolates the SaaS monitoring portion from the remediation worker. So monitoring only requires read-only writes, uh, while the remediation involves creating a worker that is contained inside of a Docker image uh, where you would install behind your firewall. Uh, this worker would be under your control and be given rights access per account and you know wherever you want auto remediation to occur essentially. Um, this will have a list of jobs that come um, help fix misconfigurations such as S3 encryptions or deleting empty security groups. Uh, but these jobs are essentially Python scripts. Uh, they come preloaded into the worker uh, but it's something we're certainly always looking to expand, but it does come with certainly a list of a uh, number of jobs already. So next, let's talk about how we can help query your inventory through the explore mode. You know, although misconfigurations are typically the largest concern, uh, one of the most common day-to-day -day tasks come from users really just asking questions about their environment. You know, what instances are attached to this key pair or uh, which security rules are connected to this security group. So the explore mode enables users to see a topographical map of their inventory. Uh, think of it like a search engine through which users can ask their questions about their cloud inventory that exists in their current environment. And lastly, I want to bring a little pro tip here. So let's talk a bit about how do we can bring it together in a hybrid environment. You know, many companies today have infrastructure in both on-prem and in the cloud. Uh, even though they can be worlds apart, it really should be your best practice to look at them holistically. And one method is to combine them. Um, certainly use something like a 
we offer a management pack to combine the two. So um, this method would join Be Realize with Cloud Health together and give you kind of a cost and visibility in both areas. Certainly a great place to start as you start to bring these areas together. And so I'll close by saying that I hope you find these tips to be helpful. You know, although we are looking through the lens of Secure State, a majority of what I've shown you can be done through other tools or from the cloud native services. Um, it still represents some of the best practices that you can establish from day one. Uh, so please let me know if you have any questions and uh, thank you, I appreciate your time.